starting to build the scene a bit more. Nowhere close to finishing yet, but join me and I'll show you what I did. Good morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now in this video I'm aiming to do three things. First of all to get some papers onto this bridge here so it matches that. It won't be a finished look though. Secondly to put some concrete or paint some concrete onto this maybe with a few areas of cobbles which still would remain and then thirdly to create a slight mound onto this and then bank away this edge to give the impression that it's going straight into the canal. All right, so I'll join me at the workbench and we'll make a start. All right, so welcome back. So my first job is to start thinking about this bridge and what I'm going to do with that. Now, I do need to put this piece in first and I've got a piece of card here. Now, obviously this is going to be far too big, but it'll give me an idea of how big to cut that. So I can, one about there and one about there. And I'll cut that off. So literally just going to put that on as it is. And then you can see this, but then It's these old traditional methods that really do work, <laughs> you know? So that's gonna go in there easily. Now I can also see I'm way too big on this side, so another little mark. Whilst that's drying, what we'll do is move on to the next item, which will be this. Now you can see I've got this area around here which will be ready for a bank as that comes down and that will go into the railway lines as they pass and then it'll be all fenced off um, all the way along. Now this is the towpath running along here so what I do want is to have a row of cobbles running around this area around here um, and then the rest of it will be uh, tarmac, um, uh, concrete, um, maybe some cobbles around this area this area here as it comes into the bridge and new mills sits here if that makes sense so what i want to do first of all is i am going to score some lines which are going to be 30 millimeters apart now i'll be honest with you i don't know how big um, concrete squares are cast in um, so i'm going to go with the biggest i dare which would be about 15 feet Right, so you may be able to see I've marked off some of these areas with different marks. Um, this part here I've done by just putting the ruler up and just guiding from a certain point where I don't know. Uh, well, where I've, I've already got these marks here for this section, so there's no point in putting them all the way down, is there? But I do want some marks up here um, to represent so that these get picked up because otherwise we could end up out of square. Right, so there's my grid. Now I must say, looking at it now, it looks it looks more like a chessboard to be honest. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut grooves in here into this with the scalpel. I'll do it all obviously, but I'll just give you a flavour. So it won't be quite as obvious. So that's all I'm gonna do and literally just score lines into the surface like that. Right, welcome back. So I've scored all the areas as you can see from before or in front of you now. So what I'm going to use for paint is I'm going to use some um, artist acrylics. So there's a light grey, there's a raw ember black and this is a B&Q colour believe it or not. Um, that's black. <laughs> As you can see, it's got a slight tinge of green in it. I'm going to take some of the grey and I'm literally just going to splurt it on like that. And then take a big brush, which I'm going to wet and then sp spread it out. Anyway, I've covered that. So I'll come back to you in a second. I'm just going to get some tissue and we'll wipe some of that off. I'll speak to you in a minute. All right, so I'm literally, I'm pressing quite hard. And the reason for that is because I've spent the time filling up those 
or putting those cracks in. Um, and this paint, as you can see, is filling it up. It's probably a little bit more than I anticipated, but that's okay. You can see a bit there. So what I'm going to do is literally just run the brush up. I'll put it in water and then run the brush up the lines like that. Hopefully some of the lines will start to come back. There you go. Just water it down a little bit. And it will look horrendous and that's okay. And even if I wipe some of this paint right off, it doesn't matter. And that's, yeah, that's looking a little bit on the thick, the thick side too. So I'm just going to water that right down. Take that lump out. And put that in the bin. Like that. Water it down. And spread it out. Now I am going to use a sponge in a minute. But this is literally just to get the paint onto the pack, onto the board, if you like. And then a tiny bit of black, because again, I don't want to go overboard with this. And just wet the whole thing down a bit. Now you might be thinking, oh John, that looks awful. Yeah, it does a bit, that's all right. So using a little bit of the sponge, Cutting a bit of this off. This came with some packaging. Now I'm going to wet that. And yeah, it's going everywhere, doesn't it? Doesn't matter. And literally just dab it over. And literally just go over all of these areas. Like so. And if it ends up with a little bit, a few streaks on it, that's fine because there would be forklifts coming out and they would be putting tire marks on the ground and then you've got the lorries obviously swinging around and they'd be putting tire marks down and people's cars and all sorts. Right, so there we are. I've put the lines back in and to be honest with you, that's pretty much all I'm going to do for this instance um, because I don't want to weather it now because it, the weathering might change when I've actually put the final buildings in place. So, you know, I'll leave that a few weeks and we'll get everything else done first and I'll come back to this. I'll do a weathering video on it. So next, what I'm going to do is I've got these cobbles. Now, again, they look very clean and pristine and they wouldn't be. So I'm going to get these glued on, first of all, and um, we'll give it a bit of a varnish and I'll... Again, I think I'll just leave it for the time being and I'll weather these down um, at a later date. Right, so I've got, um, there's my cobbles and I'm going to stick those just there. I know there's a colour difference here and that will be tied up when I do the weathering. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that now. But um, what I do want to sort out is if I cut that edge, get that reasonably the right shape. So I'm just... Now, when I did this the last time and I varnished over the top of it, um, it delaminated. And a number of people said about using a seam roller, which is a thing you use for wallpapering. I have got one, um, but personally, it's not my thing. Um, that's, it is a good idea for um, if you want to use that. But I've never had this fail before, this method. Now, you can see the glue I'm using this is in good condition look it's quite soft it's not it's not thin it's not overly soft it's not um, dried out it's not gone rubbery in other words but what i am doing is making sure i cover every part now if this was in school the children naturally do this believe it or not and they sit there and cover everything else. But if they're just sticking a sheet in their book, they don't need to because it's wasting the glue. They only need a little bit. But for this, I need every mo every molecule stuck down. Now that Sometimes what happens is if you have a paper and you rub over with your fingers, the grease in your fingers comes off 
and goes into the surface of the paper and can tear the paper if it catches. If, there's, if you catch glue underneath it and the glue has softened the surface, you can literally pull the surface off. Um, so, you know, you just got to be a bit careful, but by placing a piece of paper over the top and rubbing down on top of that, you're lessening the chance of damaging the surface. But this is going to be very heavily weathered, so I'd work with whatever state it ends up in, to be honest with you. Right, what I've decided to do is, I've put the cobbles here, as you probably have seen, but I've cut some strips, um, which originally were this long, and the idea of that is to go all the way around the edge like that. But I've cut them slightly shorter so they'll go around the curve better. And I've also found some slabs, um, three by two slabs, which I'm going to put just around the outside there. There might be a tad on the big side, but really, I don't care, to be quite honest with you. It's, you know, once it's all tied up together, it will be fine. Right, I just thought I'd show you this. Now I'm putting the varnish on this. Now, do remember this is concrete, so I'm literally just going to spread it out like that and then dab over the whole lot. And then I end up with these blotches, which is what I want. And then the, the um, varnish will um, dry ever so slightly. I don't know whether you can make that out there. You probably it's still wet, but you can see how it's going to dry. It'll end up slightly lumpy, which is what I want, ever so slightly. Okay, switching back to the bridge again now. Um, what I've done is I've taken some of this um, old grey um, brick from um, Scale Scenes. Um, it does come with lots of other different uh, brick features, if you like. Um, but what I've done is literally just cut it into 30 mil high strips and then just piece it along and press it down. This part here, as you can see, I, I literally put the scissors as if there was a point in the middle and then snip, 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 and folded each one over. That's gonna get some put on in there and then I'll put an arch around that. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, so this bit here, same again, I'm gonna put glue on that and wrap it round from the end of there. And it's probably, well, it is a bit short, but I might end up just cutting a bit of that, that bit off. Um, we'll see. Right, it's this bridge. So as you can see, I've put the um, brick papers on both sides. I've only done this bit underneath. And I thought I'd use a few of the cobblestones just to go around and create this um, arch around the top here, the cap, the keystones, capstones, that sort of thing. Um, it looks poor, I know at the moment, but it's not finished. And um, that's the bottom line. Right, so that's where the bridge is going to go between those two marks. So what I'm gonna do is literally just cut out, and it is going to be a slope. Now, if I end up with a hole in the top, it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna cut back to there, being turning it around so I don't, I'm always cutting away from myself. And you really don't want a scalpel going into the side of your hand. It hurts. Right, so that's the scene where we are so far. So obviously you can see that I've just put a surface over the bridge as well, which is just done with the same same method as I did that. Just the pale, the grey acrylic paints, a little bit of black, and just blended it in. Um, it has gone a little bit samey, but it wouldn't be massively variegated over a bridge, um, but it would be more dirty down the edges. But I'll do that at a later date. So my next stage then is to get some tissue paper and start building up some kind of mound over the top here. It will cover the side of the bridge, both sides a little bit, and then I want it to bank in. So it's not gonna come up massive, probably about five mil at the most, and then sort of slope into the edge down here. So you'll notice there that the gaps, um, when I cut, have there's made gaps in it, but I'm really not that worried because it, the tissue paper will cover that. All right, so let's right, get so the next bit then. So I've mixed up 50-50 glue water and just put a little bit of paint. This just happens to be green, brown will do. Right, so I'm literally just going to dab it all over the base, pulling it on. I'm glad it's sort of gone a bit bubbly, really. That's uh, not because there's no washing up liquid in this, by the way. 
it's just the way it's gone so literally just dab it on like that and it will soak through and it will turn into well effectively a paste really once it's soaked through of course just take a minute or two and just keep building it up by slapping it down if you like it's i am planning on putting um well making it look quite abandoned i suppose it's it will be different to what happened on the double o gauge layout if you if you're familiar with that and if you're not familiar with it go and check it out double o, uh, piccadilly sidings there'll be a link on if you go to the eye above on the screen there's an eye in a circle if you click on that there will be a link to piccadilly sidings there hopefully anyway if i can get it to work this time it didn't work last time right there we go it does look a bit of a sight i know that um but it's gonna i'm gonna cover it now in a layer so i'm just going to take one sheet of tissue paper at a time and just place it on and the glue will just soak it up or the the paper will soak the glue up i'm literally just going to dab i'm not going to brush like that and go over the whole thing and this top these top layers of paper then will start forming the top surface just like traditional papier mache just take off a piece there and actually that's got a nice natural um, angle on it so tap that down into the corners like that and then just literally just give it a tap Right, so welcome back. That is probably the finished scene for today. Uh, must stress this is by no means the finished scene. Um, but um, just as a demonstration, what have I done? Well, I started off by making the um, concrete sections. Again, nowhere close to being finished. It does need to be heavily weathered um, with also some cobblestones um, at the end there. Again, all need to be weathered and along the edge of the towpath okay the bridge has also been um, bricked out with the same type of brick maybe a bit dirtier than what's on that and also the same on here again both need to be heavily weathered and i'll probably put some buttresses coming down that just to give it some structure because that looks a bit plain and bland then i went on to put um, to make this ground this is made from tissue paper literally just screw it up and then dab it with PVA glue with some paint in it and then cover it with more tissue paper flat and, and then just build up the edge of the road down here. And then finally, I've built the tunnels on both ends, which wasn't part of this video, but I thought I've got a little bit of time, I might as well do it. And I've extended the towpath so it goes underneath okay so hopefully that creates a little bit more of the illusion what it's going to be like okay right so the uh top video that's going to be appearing on your screen is going to be the one prior to this which was all about making the download kits and uh, creating this scene and i think what we'll do is we'll start looking at how i went about making the carriage shed so it'll be number one in the series as the second video. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care for now. Bye.